Welcome to the 118th edition of Make Pro Wrestling with Jessica again. I am Tiger Height. And I'm Penny Gallery. So, uh, we are not doing the individual segments, and we are not doing the match. We got we four just... nights of wrestling to cover. Yes, it was a marathon, but we got it done. So, let's talk about first NWA 75 Night 1. I'm going to give the show as an entirety a full thumbs up. Yeah, it was pretty good. I liked it for the most part. So, it was Kenzie Page and Max the Impaler for the NWA World Women's Television Champion. That's a mouthful. I, that's what the belt is called. I don't know why. They like doing that. So, it was a fun opener. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of weird, uh, given hindsight on where it goes, that she loses to Max. Yeah. Uh, this way, because it was fairly one-sided. Mm -hmm. And I just did not think, with that hindsight in mind, that it would lead to what it was. It just felt so rushed. Yeah. But at the very least, the belt is on somebody new. Yeah. I think Kenzie really wasn't doing a whole lot with the belt personally. And I think they really needed to put Max in this position because they wanted to give them the belt. Yes. A belt of some kind. But I feel like it would have been a bad decision to put the world champion on Max. Yes. Because it would they would be too dominant as right. that champion. Right. So I think this is kind of kind of like that whole Jade Cargill with the tele with the uh, a TBS champion situation. Right. Exactly. Very similar. Right. But Max is not undefeated. Obviously, they went for the women's world champion at one point. Yeah. Um, I think this will elevate the champion to a different level because Max does wrestle both men and women fairly often. Yeah. So we'll see where it goes, and I think it'll be a different face for the women's division. Oh, absolutely. Here in general. All right. So a triple threat match for the vacant NWA National Heavyweight Champion. Oh, this gets a thumbs up, by the way. Uh, the previous match gets an orange cast. Yeah. This one is. This one was actually pretty good. I love this match. I just did not expect. The athleticism, the pace was awesome mm -hmm. for this. Uh, the turn of um, uh, Thrill Billy Silas was done very well, mm -hmm. and people lost their minds. The crowd was just great both nights for this show. Well, yeah, a smaller crowd, you know, you get that better feel for it. But it's it's not just that. They felt so lively. Yeah. I mean, I Peanut Gallery and I were talking about this, and I will stick to it, that I would rather be in a room of 60 people who are extremely passionate about the product and into the game than in half-empty arena where there are 6,000 people. Right. I, it's just so not comparison right. because the other people are going to be dead. Right. I want to be in a place where there is live, where it's fresh and it's exciting. Right. You know? In this match, people were losing their minds about everything. Nobody looked bad here. And it was the thrill ride for uh, Thrill Billy to win the belt. I liked it. Pretty yep. good. Full thumbs up. Moving on. So in a no disqualification match, Joe... Alonzo taking on Homicide. Uh, I think this. You know, there were a lot of indications with Terry Funk uh, mm -hmm. tributes throughout because Terry Funk was big in NWA. Uh, Homicide had the pants, which I thought were really cool. I like Alonzo's character, but man, I could not have found more of a generic guy in my entire <laughs> life. He is so generic. It's like he has he has the attitude, and I really like it. But he needs a little flair. He needs to do something. You That's know? what wrestling's all about. Oh my god, it's just ridiculous. Um, it was a fine match. I've seen better hardcore matches mm -hmm. in my day, um, and it was a roll up for Alonzo to win. What I liked is that Homicide lost with a roll up. Right. So it kept him strong. Yeah. Every, everybody, win or loss, everybody is like right where they need to be. Yeah. And I was so happy about that. I'm going to give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up, and that's being nice mm -hmm. um, on that end. But if you're going to do a hardcore match, you have to do a hardcore match. Right. You can't do a half-assed hardcore match because it never looks good. Anyways, what's this match? So I couldn't find the separate picture for this for some reason. I found some, but I couldn't find all of them. Mm. So this was Magnum Muscle on, taking on the Brothers of Funstruction. <sighs> it, it was a joke match. Like, I know. Th there was not really much you can do. Uh, people... There was like a, like two or three women who were losing their effing minds when Violent J was in the ring for both nights, but man, they were loud. Yeah, I think I remember that. It was, it yeah, was you remember a... they had their faces painted? Oh, they yeah. Showed them. Yeah, they were like in the back. It was oh, really yes, weird. I remember that now. Yeah. And I'm a person who went to Dark Carnival, and I'm like, yeah, that's 
pretty much what I saw when I went to Dark Carnival. Yeah, something very like, similar to this. Yeah, it was that felt like eons ago. That was a fun show. Anyway, um, it was a nothing. Yeah, there was not really much you could do there. It was a um, a whoop whoop driver. I'm pretty sure I did that right. And uh, there was a yeah, there was a fan screaming for Violent J, and there you go. It's, it's crazy on how popular the insane clown posse is. Like, their music sucks. Mm. Anyway, Carrie Morton and Colby Carino for the World Junior Heavyweight Champion. I really like this match. Yeah, it's pretty good. I, I love Colby. I, I, I like both of them, but Carrie Morton in this heel run is on such a different level. Right. He really has this, like, play to the crowd thing like, right. on lock. He is very good. Yeah, I can't wait to see him uh, go to NXT where he can actually shine. I mean, he's shining here. I, right. I, don't, I don't see him leaving for the I, foreseeable. I, well, no, I see once uh, once uh, his father finally retires, I can see him going to the E. You think so? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, both of them are very good. Yeah. They deserve it, but it feels like uh, uh, Kerry Morton has more of that potential. Oh, Colby, absolutely. Colby Carino had the opportunity, but he never went. So. Right. And I like Colby Carino. Yeah. They're just really, really small. Like, they're very small people. Yeah. Um, it was a fun match. It was a little DDT for Colby Carino to win. People lost their minds about that. Uh, the one thing that I... Well, I'll, I'll mention it when we go to the Cardona match because there was something I did not like. Because he played a heel here. Right. And then he played a baby face. I don't like it. Uh, Jack Stame and Tim Storm notice qualification match. Uh, it was a quick ref stoppage because it was a IRL stinger. I do not believe Tim Storm is hurt. I think he just landed weird and, like... There was that fear of a concussion sort of thing. Oh, was, was that it? I didn't see anything oh, about I, it. Um, the referee stopped the match because uh, uh, Tim Storm could not get up. It, right. was a th it was three minutes in, and it just, you know, what can it you do? Kind of I, 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 I can't really, point. I can't really give it a thumbs rating because it just never really got. It to never, where it yeah, it never got to second gear. It just yeah. kind of stopped. But through no fault of anybody, it happens. Yeah, but it does. I, I, I hope Tim Storm does not get back in the ring. I mean, he is really blocky. He can barely move. Yeah, and I like Tim Storm on commentary, even though he just, he looks, he looks kind of goofy. He's, he's, he's my favorite little, you know, cinnamon toast crunch. I don't have a picture for the. Uh, uh, the Brooke Invitational, the winner faced Camille tomorrow or the next day for the World Women's right. Champion. Uh, Kenzie Page won it. It yep. was fine. There was not really a whole lot of surprises other than Max being the final person. Um, but that's I, about it. Yeah, that's really about it. There yeah. wasn't really anything there to say too much about. I'll give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up, and that's being really nice. Matt Cardona's Open Challenge. I love Matt Cardona. He is so great on the um, on the indies, and I think that's why he's kind of hanging around right. for a little bit. I mean, I'm sure he's getting paid great money. Oh to... yeah, but I'm sure he's making more money in other ways besides the wrestling. Oh, oh yeah, you I know, mean, he, he has he, the he, podcasts he, and everything like that too. The, po so. the podcast, the toy stuff, yeah, his his brand in general, and he's a very sought after wrestler. Yeah. Why, why would you ruin that? Right. And it seems like he's having fun too. Uh, Matt Cardona took on Ricky Morton. Yep, that was interesting. <laughs> and it was radio silence for code for Cardona to win. It was fine. Ricky Morton can barely move. Again, then, can barely move. There we then, go. And then here is where I got confused because Cardona was continuing to attack Ricky, but then Carrie helped him. So is he a baby face? Is he a heel? Because that was very baby facey mm -hmm. to do that. And I get it. It's like, you know, father and son, but there was a way to do that without making it look weird. And that looked really weird. Yeah, who knows? I wasn't a big fan of it. I'll, I'll give the match an Orange Cassidy thumbs up, and that's being nice. <laughs> a lot of a lot of Orange Cassidy thumbs up, but that's really nice. A lot of neutral. It, it, it is neutral because it's like it was fine. It was fun. It was there. You know, it just existed. The, the two NWA uh, before we get into this and go on the diatribe. The two nights of NWA is just like every now and then is fine, and this is perfect for that. But don't put fifteen matches. Her night on there. Because oh, we've we've had we've there are a lot of criticisms that we have mounted in the past for this. Yeah, so. just don't because we're just throwing people in the ring and calling it a day. I would rather have six well-paced, very good matches 
rather than 15 Orange Cassidy thumbs up being nice matches. Right. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and even though we said overall the show was good, there were only a couple of matches that really pushed that pay-per-view right. into that stratosphere. And this is one of them. Yeah. I did like this match. <laughs> this was a really good match. Uh, La Rebellion taking on Blunt Force Trauma. Uh, BFT had. I mean, had to win this match. Oh, yeah. They got title opportunity after title opportunity after title opportunity, and they lost every single one. They had to. They had to. And it was a heel kick for BFT to win. I'm going to give it a full thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, but I do not like how they followed it up because uh, the next show, well, well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's just say I did not like what they did with La Rebellion because, once again, throwing a match in there for the sake of having a match, right. and we don't need to do that. And into our main event, in another no disqualification match, three no disqualification matches in one night. That's why happens they have 15 fucking matches. Right. Camille and... Uh, Natalia Markova for the World Women's Champion. Uh, their match at the last pay-per-view was better. I like this match, but I just thought the other one was just structured yeah, that's better. Yeah, that was the same impression that I got. I thought the last one was much better. Yep. And it, it, through no fault of their own, the last one was very good. I mean, that was a two-thumbs-up match, right. and it was very good. It was going to be really difficult to kind of follow that up. Yep. Yeah. And even if they got close to it, I would have been fine with it, but it just never really got there because you knew Camille was going to win. Right. There just wasn't anything there for Markova for me to believe that she could have done it this time around. I had more believability on the last show than this show. Right. Uh, but, yes, it was a... Uh, it was a spear through the table for Camille to win. I'll give it a full thumbs up. Yeah. It was close to two, but it just wasn't there. Yeah, it just didn't have that magic. Yeah, the, the expectation was not met, and that could be good and could be bad, depending on how you feel. But that was really NWA night, uh, NWA 75 at night one. When we come back, we're going to be talking about NWA night two. Yep. <laughs> 